I want to welcome you to this very first session in this learner's level. Now, the disciples of Jesus, the people who followed Jesus, they were called disciples. And in the most basic meaning of the word disciple, they were a learner. They were a student. They were learning something. Now, what we want to learn is not just about Jesus, but we want to learn of Jesus. We want to become like Him. We want to, His nature, His character. And so we're, we're going to be talking about learning to be like Jesus Christ. And one of the greatest things about Jesus was his prayer life. And that's why in this first learner's level and section, all of these interviews that we're going to be doing, and I'm going to have some interviews with Dave Butts, and Dave is chairman of the U.S. National Prayer Committee, and we're going to be talking about prayer. One of the things that happened in the lives of, of, of the disciples when they were following Jesus, they saw him do miracles. They saw him turn water into wine. They saw him heal the sick. They saw him raise the dead. They saw him do extraordinary things. But they never once asked him, Lord, teach us to turn water into wine. Teach us to heal the sick. Teach us to raise the dead. But they did say, Lord, teach us to pray. They knew that prayer was the secret of everything that he did. And so what I want to do in this first session is just to introduce you to the subject of prayer and how important it is. In fact, not only did they ask Jesus to teach them to pray, but the very last thing that happened when Jesus, before Jesus ascended to heaven, was he told them to wait in Jerusalem. He put them in a prayer meeting. And those new disciples, those first century disciples or learners, the first thing he had to teach them when he left this earth was he had to teach them to wait upon the Lord. And so the greatest lesson you will learn, I think, in following Jesus is that the Christian life is not something you can live in your own power. It's not by your strength, it's not by your courage or how great you are, but it's in what God can do. And so you need to learn to wait upon the Lord. Now what I have discovered is that people struggle with prayer because we don't really fully understand prayer. A, a lot of things, uh, some people think, well, you know, I'm wasting my time. I can tell you right now, you are not wasting your time. When you spend time alone with God, God will do more than you could ever imagine. So you, you're not wasting your time. Uh, another thing is that, that people think, well, I'm not doing something. I need to be doing something. And yes, there are a lot of things that we need to be doing as Christians. But I can tell you right now, Jesus gave those disciples the greatest challenge ever. He wanted them to go into the whole world and make disciples of all the nations. Now, these were common, ordinary people. These were tax collectors. These were fishermen. These were doubters. These were deniers of Jesus. I mean, these, were, these weren't the great, mighty people. These were just common people with flaws and had messed up. But Jesus was sending them with the greatest task ever given to anyone. But he told them, first, wait in Jerusalem. Tarry in the place of prayer until you be endued with power from on high. And so in this learner's level, what we want to do is to help you to develop a prayer life, a time alone with God where you meet with God and God meets with you and you learn of Him and He teaches you of Himself. Now, when I first came to Christ, that was the first thing that happened. I found a place and I began to meet with the Lord and God began to work in my life and, and He began to teach me. I, I would take the Bible and I would memorize Scripture and I'd talk to God and He'd talk to me. And there were three other friends and, and the four of us would meet. There was a little hill that overlooked a lake right near the Capitol building and, and we would pray every morning. Early in the morning we would go there and we would meet with the Lord and all oh, those were such special times and set a pattern for my life. When I became a pastor of the church, and, and I wanted to teach some men how to walk with God, the first thing I did was to begin to teach them how to have a time alone with God. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about being religious and praying in some kind of religious way. What I'm talking about is having a time where you encounter God. And, and so I began to teach them the principles of how Jesus taught His disciples to pray. And that's what we're going to do in these sessions. We're going to be learning 
how to pray and what prayer is and, and how you develop that. You know, I, I know some of the guys who were in that situation, they had never prayed publicly. <laughs> they prayed very little privately. Probably the most they'd prayed was, Lord bless the food. But they began to learn to pray. And as they learned to pray, something happened. They begin to share Jesus with others, and they begin to lead others to Christ. And that's why in our second level, once we, once we learn to pray, and we're going to have 13 weeks here of talking about what it means to have a time alone with God and helping you to develop a time alone with God. But then as you do that, there's another level you go to, and that is sharing Jesus with others. And so we're calling that the mentor level. And, and we hope that you'll not only learn to pray, but you'll go to that level of sharing Christ with others. Then something happened within these men. And by the way, my wife was leading some women through the same thing. They began to be leaders. And not only did they begin to win others to Christ, but they began to disciple. And all of a sudden, everything multiplied in our church. And our church exploded in growth. And so that's what we're calling this multipliers level. And then the fourth level is, is the level of co-labors. Every one of these men and women became leaders in their church. Not because they were trying to be leaders in a church, but because they had grown, they had matured in Christ, and, and because they had met with God in this time alone with God. And that had become sort of the, the foundation for their growth. And so there are four levels. But this first level, there's one thing we want to do. We just want to help you develop a time alone with God. That's the whole goal in this first level. So, so we want you to be having time. We're going to have these, these text devotions you read. There'll be some questions you'll answer after each one. There will be a video devotion and there'll be a teaching like this where I'm interviewing someone all the way through this process. You need to go through this and we're just going to ask some simple questions, not anything hard and there's no passing or failing this. Just want to ask some questions and here's the questions. What did God speak to your heart through the scripture? And what did God speak to your heart through the devotion or the teaching? How did, how, what's stirring in your heart? And so just answer whatever's on your heart. And in your group, y'all will share with one another and encourage one another. Uh, and if you're struggling, say, hey, I'm struggling with this. And, and, and you will encourage each other and help one another. And that's the purpose of, of this. It's not to become some kind of person who's a super smart, a super giant uh, theologian. That's not the, what we're working towards. We're trying to work, help you to develop a time alone with God. We found that if you can do something for three months regularly, that'll become a part of your lifestyle. We want this to be a part of your lifestyle. Those early disciples were called followers of the way. They were following a way of life. And part of that way of life was that they were people who spent time with their God in prayer. And so we want to teach you how to do that. So we all have 13 weeks of this. And by the way, not just 13 weeks. As you go through each one of these levels, and, and you can go as far as you want and stop uh, after level one if you want to. I hope that you won't. I hope that you'll keep going and go through all of these levels because, listen, one of the greatest blessings is as you grow to begin to share Christ with others and then see others come to Christ and help them to grow in Christ. Oh, what a blessing that will be. But as you do that and as you grow in Christ, we will be there to help you. There's a lot of resources that you'll have here and, and you'll be able to grow in the Lord and God will you, use you and you will become fruitful in your life. So these 13 weeks, and there are four sets of them, so that's a full year. If you spend a full year having some kind of consistent time with God, you're going to become a person of prayer. No doubt in my mind about it. You will grow and your prayer life will grow and you will become what God wants you to be. That's the purpose. That's the goal for these next 13 weeks.